It is time for the second summary of Tales from the Pizzaplex Book 5, The Bobby Doss Conclusion. This summary will of course be on the second story of the book, and this story is titled The Storyteller. Last time we went over everything that happened in the first story, GGY, so go check that out if you haven't already. Keep in mind that I'll be doing a summary of the last story, Bobby Dots Part 2, as well as the epilogue for this book, so stay tuned for those, and without further ado, let's get started. The story begins from the perspective of Mr. Burroughs, the youngest person in the room with all the five men and four women that made up the Fazbear Entertainment Board of Directors. Mr. Burroughs was 35 years old and was a Fazbear Entertainment Board Chairman, and the story begins with him upset about a figure that the accountant named Dale handed him, saying that if the figure was correct, the Pizzaplex wouldn't be able to make any money the way it's currently set up. He knew Dale was always right about the money, and Dale was the only person in the room right now that wasn't part of the Board of Directors except one other man named Edwin Murray, who was 64 years old and the oldest person in the room. Mr. Burroughs claimed that in order to get out of this box that they were stuck in, they had to shave off some of the excess regarding the Pizza Plex in order to raise the profit. The creative development team would have to be downsized, and this caught the, the attention of Edwin, who hadn't really been paying attention. Decades before, Edwin's engineering company was bought out by Fazbear Entertainment. The only reason he was part of Fazbear Entertainment was because Edwin's company had actually failed, a fact Mr. Burroughs liked to remind him of very often. Because Edwin's company was bought out, Edwin was forced to be present during meetings. However, he didn't really pay attention too often, but his attention was caught by Mr. Burroughs saying the creative development team should be diminished. Edwin believed that the stories of Fazbear Entertainment were what drove the success of the company. Mr. Burroughs saw it differently though, believing that the technology is what drove the success, but Edwin argued that the technology would be nothing without the stories. However, the plan wasn't to completely stop creating stories, instead the plan was to create the stories using AI. Mr. Burroughs suggested that they input all the different characters and tropes into a program that the tech team would create called The Storyteller, which would then produce an auto-generated story. After all, record labels use software to create songs, so it's not that far-fetched, but Edwin was having none of it. Everyone on the board was all for it, but Edwin was completely against it. But majority rules and there was nothing Edwin could do about it. He tried to act calm while also questioning some things. He asked how the program would be able to turn stuff into an actual story, however he was basically ignored. Edwin began thinking about the old Freddy Fazbear's Pizza signs that used to be in this room before Mr. Burroughs became the chairman of the board and removed all of them. But honestly, Fazbear posters reminded Edwin of a past he'd rather have forgotten and also wouldn't have been able to explain. Edwin's past had a lot of mistakes which eventually led to this engineering company failing, leading up to this moment. He wasn't really seen as an important member of the company. Mr. Burroughs put him as a consultant for the storyteller, but whenever he presented an idea, he was always ignored. However, he did manage to contribute to something. The storyteller was planned to become the Pizzaplex's new star attraction, and it would be placed dead in the center of the Pizzaplex. Mr. Burroughs suggested that the storyteller should be in a fake tree to represent a tree of life kind of thing. So after some arguments about what tree to use, Edwin finally suggested a Baobab tree, which is a very large and unique looking tree, one of which exists in South Africa and has many legends surrounding it. So Edwin thought that if the storyteller would be in a tree, it should be in a tree that is related to stories. Everyone liked that idea and they got to work. And although Edwin still didn't like the whole storyteller thing in general, he was happy to have contributed something. At one point in the story, while Edwin was admiring the Pizza Blacks, he wondered to himself if it would be possible to harness human joy and channel it into a machine. He believed it had to be possible. This seems to be a clear reference to the fact that in the world of FNAF that is in fact possible, and happens on multiple occasions. Some regarding more negative emotions like Andrew's infected items, and some with more positive emotions like the Simon doll. The Baobab tree ended up looking nothing like a Baobab at all, or like any tree that existed. The trunk was painted yellow to match the roller coaster in the Pizza Blacks, and the leaves were made rainbow colored. The the trunk contained a network of cables that spread through the acting roots of the tree which had actually been wires that connected through the entire Pizzaplex. This means that all the animatronics would receive and carry out instructions from the storyteller. Edwin was displeased to find out that he wasn't actually allowed to see inside the tree, but when he asked Mr. Burroughs, he was told that no one could see inside the tree. A decision was also made to hide the storyteller from view, like the man behind the scenes as people could only see the tree adding an element of mystery to him. Edwin worried that this would make the storyteller a bit ineffective. Edwin wanted to know everything that was going into the storyteller and its tree, so he gathered all the memos about it that spread around, but he eventually ran out of those, so he did the next best thing. 
One night, just before midnight, he positioned himself behind a fake plant in the lobby of Monty's Gator Golf to watch what was going on by the storyteller's tree. He could see that the door to the tree had been opened, but he wasn't able to see much of anything inside. But he was able to see a three foot wide white metal tiger head being carried towards the open tree trunk. This basically gave Edwin a mental breakdown. If this had been a real tiger head, it wouldn't have been as traumatizing for him, but seeing this white metal tiger head reminded him of something in his past, and he decided that he'd seen enough of this for today, and he left. As it turns out, the security team caught Edwin on the cameras by Monty Golf and reported it to Mr. Burroughs, who believed that while Edwin was a real pain in his side, he wouldn't be a problem as of now. We cut back to Edwin bumping into Mr. Burroughs, and he asked what program he was using to create the storyteller's stories. Mr. Burroughs explained that it was a simple template-style software that took pieces from previously created stories and rearranges them and turns them into different scenarios for VR, AR, and arcade games. Mr. Burroughs kept on saying that there was no need to be worried, but Edwin was certain that there was and he needed to see the storyteller's programming. However, he was not able to see the programming and instead opted to try and see how the storyteller was affecting the different areas of the Pizzaplex, and he immediately found issues. Roxanne's usual self-centered personality was amplified, now turning her, her into a straight-up bully. Chica's love for food was altered and became an aggressive need for attention. Monty became more violent than he already was, and between the violent tantrums, he would withdraw into a depressive silence. All the other animatronics went through similar changes as well. Mr. Burroughs brushed this off as just them being larger than life, as he puts it, but Edwin knew that it was a real problem. Soon after, relatively minor glitches began happening with animatronics, electricity, pipes, and things like that, but they happened so frequently and Edward knew that the storyteller had to have something to do with it. He knew he was the only one who would do anything about it and decided he had to get inside the storyteller's tree. So with a bit of help from a woman in the Fazbear Archive building lobby who liked Edwin, he was able to look at the schematics and notes for the storyteller's baobab tree and figured out how to get inside. There had been a palm scanner on the tree that would only accept three specific people, of which Edwin was of course not. But there was also a way in through the maintenance access. Because the tree branches were too delicate, maintenance on them couldn't be done by walking on them. So there were catwalks installed that connected to the top of the tree, where there was a hatch leading into the trunk that wasn't locked as they didn't worry about a breach from there. So Edwin managed to get into the trunk. He climbed all the way down to the bottom of the trunk and instantly his joy dwindled. He was now face to face with the storyteller, the white metal tiger, for the first time, and it took him a few minutes to calm down, but he was eventually able to calm himself and look into the programming. The operating system for the storyteller was password protected, but he didn't need to get into there. The start screen of the computer inside the tree revealed that the storyteller was running a program called Mimic One. This made Edwin freak out. Quote from the story, his worst fears were confirmed. He'd known it. He'd tried to pretend he hadn't known it, but he'd known it. He'd known it from the very beginning. No wonder the Pizzaplex characters were changing. No wonder problems were cropping up all over. It was happening again, and Edwin had no idea what to do about it." End quote. However, the book does not tell us what he's so worried about. He ended up going back to the tree for another four days. Normally, he would only get four to five hours of sleep, but now he was getting only one or two. We then find out that Edwin had a wife who had died in childbirth, leaving Edwin with a baby boy who he loved so very much. However, the book then says the words, if only. What the hell happened to that kid? We never find out. We then learn a little bit more about Mr. Burroughs, how he's the head of Fazbear Entertainment, despite thinking that a lot of what they do was a bit stupid. He had a bunch of hobbies, and he was going to go to a regatta this weekend, but he was missing it because of what was going on with Edwin. He had been hearing that the characters associated with the attractions like Monty Golf, Roxy Raceway, Fazbear Blast, and Bonnie Bowl were behaving unusually. One of his advisors told him it was due to the storyteller, but Mr. Burroughs was almost certain it was Edwin's doing. He sat in the dining room eating pizza, trying to catch Edwin in the act of sneaking into the tree, but eventually, after seeing nothing, he headed to Glamrock Freddy's green room. Normally, Glamrock Freddy was a badass, like the book literally says that, but right now he was being a spoiled brat, trying to wrestle a plushie of the original Freddy Fazbear from a little girl. Mr. Burroughs was sure this was Edwin's doing. He left Rockstar Row, and after thinking about it a while, he figured out how Edwin was getting into the tree. He issued orders to retask security cameras to watch the top of the tree, and he now had a clear video of Edwin entering through the top and exiting from the top a few hours later. The tree had no ventilation, so Edwin would always keep the top hatch of the tree open while he was inside, but Mr. Burroughs installed a mechanism where he could close the top of the tree at will, trapping Edwin inside. He literally acknowledges the fact that Edwin leaves it open for ventilation, and then he doesn't realize that the reason Edwin never actually tries to get out of the tree is because he's dead. Yeah, Mr. Burroughs traps Edwin inside the tree, 
and Edwin literally dies because of that. Mr. Burroughs believes he's doing the right thing as Edwin was a very expensive employee and he did break the rules so he was getting what he deserved. He literally leaves Edwin there for over a week even while he goes on a trip. When he got back he expected to learn that Edwin tried to escape but he hadn't. I seriously don't know how Mr. Burroughs was able to become the head of a company without realizing that if Edwin kept the hatch open so he could breathe and that if you close the hatch then he can't breathe and he will die. He also has no food or water in there, meaning even if he could breathe in there, he would he would still die within days. But Mr. Burroughs really expects him to be trying to escape after a week, with nothing keeping him alive or nothing giving him any energy to even try to escape in the first place. Mr. Burroughs is seriously moronic. He seriously thinks that there might be a trap door that Edwin is using to go in and out of the tree that was eluding Mr. Burroughs. Eventually, Mr. Burroughs decided to, to confront Edwin, so he opened up the door into the storyteller's tree with a palm scanner and went inside. The door closed behind him, which he didn't think was a big deal, until he realized that anything you do inside the tree was turned off to, pre to prevent Edwin from escaping, meaning Mr. Burroughs was now trapped. Inside the tree was a bunch of colored construction paper with weird symbols and the words I'm sorry on each and every one. On the floor was Edwin's corpse with a crayon in his hand and a piece of construction paper on him as if he was in the middle of writing on it before he died. In a desperate attempt to escape, Mr. Burroughs disconnected the wires connected to the storyteller so attractions would shut down and people would come to check it out in here. But when he disconnected the wires, the storyteller remained on. He tore off two of the four arms in the storyteller, but it remained on. He tore the other two off, but it remained on. He beat the crap out of the storyteller, but it remained on. And he was left with bleeding knuckles. He was trapped. He couldn't even manually shut down the storyteller as the command from inside the tree also was cut off. He considered banging on the top panel, but he knew it wouldn't work. He knew he couldn't escape. The story ends with Mr. Burrow banging and kicking at the door to the storyteller's tree, knowing full well that no one could hear him and knowing that he would die in here all alone. Well... Alone was a bit of a stretch. He still had his old pal, Edwin Murray, here to keep him company in his final moments. But anyways guys, that's all for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and let me know in the comments what you thought of the story. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? Let me know and if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to, but I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys!